If God were to fulfill what you are praying for now, do you think you'd be ready for it? I know. You've been praying. You've been seeking him. You've been asking him where exactly or what exactly you want me to do. I'm in a moment in my life as well. I'm in a position right now where I know there's more for me. There has to be. I'm thinking to myself, this can't be the only thing that the Lord has for me. But I'm also reminded that if I only think in that way and miss what is before me, I'll never actually even grow what God wants to grow in me. We have all been there in life where we're going, God, would you just please hurry up? Would you just move the, the line a little bit? Would you just open up the door, the window, something for me to potentially walk through and do more of your will and your purpose? And all the while we are praying this, God actually has us in the purpose that he wants I know that's not maybe what you want to hear, but right now in this moment, what can you pull from this season that will lead you to the next one? Who you are now is going to follow you to where you are going to go. You don't just magically become the man or woman of God that he wants you to be by being disgruntled with the season at hand and by not taking advantage of what you can influence, what you can decide to toil with with your hands. So many of us want the season to change, but we're not willing to go through the current moment that is hard. And what can God teach you in this difficult situation? Think about this for, for a second. When the Israelites went through 40 years of going through the desert, it is said that it would have taken 12 days for them to go through the desert. You know why it took them so long? Because they were not being obedient to the Lord. I don't want you to be like that. I don't want you to be 70 years old, missing what God had for you because you always wanted your season to change and you're never content with what was right before you. What you have now is enough. What you have in this moment is enough. Because if you have Christ, you have all that you need. So if you're afraid to do the thing that he's beckoning you to do, if you have Christ, you lean on his strength. You don't lean on your strength. You lean on the Lord because he knows what you need before you even say a word. And he has seen the beginning to the end. He will guide you, lead you, direct you in the places that you're supposed to go. But will you allow him to? That's the key distinguishing factor. The reason the Israelites didn't get to the promised land sooner is because they were not obedient to the Lord. They weren't wanting his presence or his guidance, but they wanted their slavery. They wanted the place where they were at one point enslaved. They wanted to go back. Don't keep going back to what God has freed you from. It's time you walk in the freedom that God is offering to you today and that you walk as a man or woman free of the life that you once were and remind the enemy that the man that you once were or the woman that you once were is not the man you are today. And if you are being brought up to your mind, I was today when I was at church about things I've done, and immediately my response was affirming scripture over my life. I was affirming that I have been made new into the image of Christ. I was affirming that I have been forgiven of my sin. I've been cleansed of my sin. I have been redeemed of my sin. And so the moment that the war came into my mind of what I have done, where I've gone wrong, I reminded myself of what Christ has done for me. And I reminded the enemy of my soul and your soul and the souls around us that the Lord has defeated him and he's defeated the shame, he's defeated the guilt, and he's freed me of my penalty. Because my penalty of sin has been freed, I can walk in the freedom he's offering me. And Jesus wants to provide that freedom to you, but you have to walk in it. You can't just expect him to do everything for you. You have to respond to the beckoning that he's putting on your heart. And maybe this video showed up on your feed and you're going, man, I'm stuck. I feel so lost. I feel like I've done so much wrong. I'm right there with you. I've also done wrong. I've also done things that I'm not proud of. But we are not saved by our brokenness. We are saved by our confession. And that confession is in the name that is above every other name. His name is Jesus. Isn't that something to rejoice about? Knowing that Jesus paid the price for us, did what we couldn't do, and we get this free gift of God that will last not just in this time that we have here on this earth, but in the life to come. We have eternally solidified 
because of our confession and the one that he has sent. His name is Jesus. He has the power to save, the power to redeem, and he can do that for you.